Okay, I think we're live. So this is um, an open life science graduation call. Um, I will quickly run through our usual housekeeping reminders. Um, so we have a code of conduct with open life science. Generally, this means treat one another with respect uh, and the way that you would like to be treated by another person. Um, if at any point you witness any problems, this could be either something that you've seen or something that you've experienced, then you can report this um, so that your reporting information is in our document. You can email team at openlifeside.org or if it's something that one of the founders have done individually, then you can email Berenice, Malvika or Yo at openlifeside.org to specifically report it without getting the person who's the problem in the loop. Um, so today we are going to be presenting for Sandy. So Sandy, whenever you're ready, would you like to take over and share your screen? Absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank you for taking the time to meet with me today. Um, let's see. Make sure. Um, oh, it says, is, is there a way for me to get permission to share my screen? Oh, Zoom keeps on changing things. Try now. Yeah, thank you. I think they only allow one host now, I think. I don't know. I, I very rarely use it. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, can you see my screen? We can. Oh. Do you want to just click share and see if we can, oh, not share, present, and then see if we can still see it. And it's Oops. looking good. Okay, so you got a preview of my presentation. Um, well, thank you both for meeting with me. I'm really excited to be presenting about um, sort of my vision for this for this project and where I see it going in the future. Um, my project involves enabling open practices in biology education, and I left it kind of broad in terms of education because I want this to be applicable not only in terms of uh, mentoring students in teaching laboratories, but also mentoring students in research labs. And this project would not have been possible without my wonderful mentor, Fotis, who has been um, an, an immense source of support and also um, someone who I've learned so much about in terms of mentoring, but also getting more involved in open practices. So the motivation from this project came from the fact that um, mentoring for me is really, really important. I was lucky to have amazing mentors in my life and I have been trying to replicate what they do, but I don't know how. <laughs> um, and oftentimes when I speak to other students who come to me for help, um, they have problems with their mentors and it comes down to a lot where there's lack of communication. And a, a recent study in, in 2008 uh, looked at what actually makes a good training program for students who are in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And one of the aspects that I really kind of, patience is a huge thing, but um, something that kind of uh, stood out really is the fact that there's this really large need for listening and openness and communication. So how do we kind of open up that portal or open up sort of that avenue to allow this communication to occur? So many people want to be good mentors, but we don't know how because we didn't actually get a formal mentoring pro uh, program. And so oftentimes when we get thrown into a position where we get to mentor students, because it is a privilege, um, it can be really overwhelming. You can be thrown in and there's just so much kind of so much going on around you. You try and tell yourself it's fine, I can get through this. Um, but oftentimes you're a little bit stuck in terms of where you even get started. So I think a lot of the problems that come out of um, these, the mentor-mentee relationships is the fact that there's lack of communication and uh, the mentors don't really know how to mentor their students properly. So what I was, what the goal of my project is, is that we have this problem where we want to be more inclusive, we want to make this a better learning experience for our mentees, um, but we don't really know how because there's so many resources and they're all over the place and we really just don't have the time to be searching for them. So my solution is to develop this one-stop shop where you can log in and be able to download a lot of resources that will just get you up and running. 
And where I intend this to be really helpful is for a lot of faculty, not only junior faculty who want to set up their labs, but the senior faculty where a lot of this discussion about openness and mentoring was not part of their training. So for a lot of them, they would, they, they would also benefit from these sorts of resources. And giving this an opportunity where others can contribute to them, so it's more of a sharing resource. Um, we can, for instance, within the life sciences, scientists, uh, sciences, we have the biologists who could be helping out different, you know, similar um, labs, but we also have a lot of kind of complementarity within the life sciences as well. And so what I've been working on is developing a repo that will serve as sort of a, um, a, a conduit to share these sorts of resources. Um, so I called it Lab Starter uh, for now. We'll see if I change the name later. But the whole idea is like, this is a, a, something you can clone to your desktop and just get up and running. What I envision that this will then have is various open lab notebooks. So how do you even maintain these lines of communication even across the years and across different students and members? Um, code of conducts, because um, that can be something kind of difficult to write. Different mentoring plans so that you can actually have guidelines on how to be a good mentor, but also mentoring compacts, which are like contracts bet between the mentor and mentee that you can use with each individual and agree upon um, um, reasonable um, reasonable guidelines that are good for that individualized mentoring plan but also standard operating procedures oftentimes a lot of us have very typical or very standard ways that we produce reagents and whatnot so i liked that protocols the io presentation um, that's something that, that i think can be implemented within there to help make it so it's a little bit more widespread um, there was also some discussion about different ways that we manage our mini tasks. So others had mentioned Trello. Um, I really like Asana, but also Slack and Zotero. Really great ways to kind of make it more transparent in terms of what resources are available and what can be helpful. Um, but I think within there, it's all it's super, super important to be thinking at, at the very utmost how we can make this more equitable and inclusive. So also be giving resources on how to be a better ally for, uh, for, for our different members of the community so that we can try and maintain a, a work environment that's more diverse, inclusive, as well as equitable. And then finally, a frequently asked questions kind of get people up and running. So I think an important aspect that I've you know, really kind of embraced within this program is that you really do have to celebrate some of these small victories um, so that you can work towards the end goal. So I have set up a GitHub repo. I drafted my code of conduct. Um, I started a list of resources um, that I will eventually list on there, but I haven't quite moved in the full realm of things of that, but I do have a separate list. Um, my main task, so Fotis and I have been trying to distill the big project into manageable tasks. And so we're going for the main task of building that mountain of engagement that we had discussed in the cohort calls. Um, so I'm building or drafting my contributor guidelines and then providing examples of ways that community members can contribute because there's many different ways that they can contribute. But moving forward, even though um, kind of a deadline has sought for the program, I do plan on continuing my project, something I'm very excited about. So there's lots of different ways for me to move into kind of improving that engagement and then kind of building upon the skeleton that I already have for this. So this project could not have been possible without many, many people involved. Um, so I give huge thanks to my mentor, Fotis, who has been there with me since the very beginning and who I've learned how to be a better mentor from just by seeing how he mentors me. Um, also the Open Life Science organizers, Denise, Malvika, and Neo. Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I have had such an amazing experience and I feel so much more kind of um, and get in, invigorated to kind of move forward as well. And then also my Open Seeds cohort. Um, I've really in, appreciated the comments and also really loved hearing their discussions throughout the entire program. So thank you both for your time. Okay, should I stop sharing my screen? Sounds great and um, great job. I oh, wish I could do proper rock cheers into the microphone, but then everyone's ears hurt. <laughs>
<laughs> no, no, for sure. Thank you so much. I, I'm glad that I had the chance to um, share what I've done so far. That was, that was really, really good. I cannot wait to see where this project goes. Um, I had a couple of questions actually. Um, one was, oh, actually, this, the first one was a comment. Typical, not a comment, a question, it's a comment. Uh, but I just want to say I love the mentoring compacts. That sounds great. Like where two people are actually agreeing directly, this is how we will work together in our mentoring yeah. relationship. I love the, the idea of defining that in writing. That's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, but I did also want to know if you had a chance to chat with Elsa at all. No, I saw her just her project and I felt like there's such good complementary between our two projects. So I'm hoping that I can build up mine a little bit better and, and hopefully the two of us can kind of maybe, I don't know, collaborate, but at least chat with each other and kind of see where we can both kind of align our interests. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's about what I was thinking. You sound very um, on the same page in terms of the starting new PI concerns. Exactly. I think Mavika, you had one to add there? I was going to say, I think Cass is as well quite aligned. I think Cass is working on probably a little bit different level where people are um, interested or not interested in open science and how to have an information place for them. So I think there were a few people who would totally be a really good collaborators for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this has been such a great experience just to meet other people who have like interests. Um, so when I was in the beginning, before things got crazy, I was scrolling through trying to make comments on people's repos. And I was just thinking, oh, yeah, that's definitely helpful. Or I never even thought about that. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, no, I, t I totally agree. It's, it, it is amazing how sometimes just like getting outside of your own head and getting other people's views. Oh, wow. <laughs> Definitely. And really just um, recognizing just how, how, much, how nuanced the whole process of openness is, because there's a lot of aspects where I didn't, I thought, oh, well, it's assumed everyone agrees with that. No, there's lots of, lots of ways that it differs across industry, governments, as well as academia. Amazing. Um, any questions or comments to add, either of you? Just to comment on exactly that, uh, is that a lot of time, of course, there's a problem that uh, people don't know. But then there, there are people who are like, why do you have to spend so much time in doing this? You want me to do this and I'll do this, right? But then the reality is that there is no thought going into it. So just getting people more aware of that. Why is it important to take time and educate yourself and think about this conscious designing is so important. It definitely is. Yeah, there's a lot of people who say, you know, oh, you're, you're a researcher. Why are you even spending time on stuff like this? Because like, it's super important. It's, it's, it's something that you don't just, uh, you can't separate from it. You have to be sharing resources with others you have to be engaging with others and making them feel valued within your community um so this has been fantastic so i'm already kind of trying to figure out like how i can try and share it with some of my colleagues and i've talked to people outside of um the cohort and they've been super psyched you know that's something that they really want both the students as well as the men mentors um so i really hope that i can bring this up to something where um it's a little bit more helpful for you for users. Yeah, it sounds really um, very, very exciting. I, I cannot wait to see where it goes. And so hopefully, um, we'll be looping this in, you know, OLS five and it'll all be just like materials that OLS one created. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some examples of projects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And um, so I think we might be basically done. So we, we have graduated. <laughs> so <laughs> next year, massive sparkles. Um, so I'm going to stop recording now. Okay. Stop. And stop.